It looks like I'm coming to you from a CIA headquarters, but in fact, we're recording at our underground building science lair. <laughs> All right, guys, hard topic today. We're talking about vapor barriers, and I was trying to figure out how I could shoot this at a job site, but I'm just not using any vapor barriers on jobs these days. So I thought we'd record this here at the office where I can have access to the computer and show you some images, uh, both from the past and from a few places around the web on this important topic. Specifically, what's happening is I'm seeing vapor barriers being used incorrectly on jobs all the time, and I'm getting builders asking me, when do I use them, when do I not? Now, when I say vapor barrier, most builders are looking at this image right here. This is some uh, Rockwell unfaced bats. That's how they're coming. And then the builder, whether it was the inspector or the builder, said, hey, let's cover those with polyethylene. Six mil poly is typically what's being used out there that I'm seeing. And when I was a builder in the 90s, we were told on the warm side in the winter is where we're going to put that, that polyethylene uh, vapor barrier, or poly vapor barrier. And so that's where you're seeing it right here. Now let's go uh, to a couple places in the web that I, I use as some trusted sources, findhomebuilding.com. You know, this is a great image from their website talking about vapor barriers. If you look here, we've got a house. Here's the cold outside. It's, you know, maybe under 10 degrees outside. Here's the inside of the house and the heater's on. We're maybe 68 degrees outside. And this blue right here you're seeing, that's some vapor that's been diffused in the inside air. Inside our houses, we're breathing, we're cooking, we're showering, we're boiling pasta. And so the humidity typically in our houses in the wintertime is much, much higher than it is outside. Cold air can't hold a lot of humidity. So if you look at this diagram here, they've got a sheet of drywall, and that water vapor is diffusing through the drywall. That's the process where basically those small water uh, molecules that are in the air floating, we can't see them, are able to actually go from places of high humidity to low humidity, from warm to cold. And so it's diffusing through the drywall. You can see it's even wetting somewhere in the insulation there. And on the back of the sheet, and it's cold, it's condensing. And if you looked at this diagram, you'd think, oh my gosh, without a vapor barrier, this wall is gonna get drenched. There's just gonna be liquid water all over the place. Now, I don't wanna get into this article in particular, but I do wanna jump over uh, to Wikipedia. I was curious to see what they had to say on the matter. Check out this Wikipedia uh, page right here. Uh, we're talking about vapor barriers specifically here, and it defines a vapor barrier. It says a vapor barrier is something that's 0.1 perms or less, basically plastic sheathing, and then interesting where they show where you need it. Based on the geography here, really the only place where you need um, an exterior vapor barrier, they're saying, is in Florida and maybe a few parts of Texas, and then where you need an interior vapor barrier is basically from there on north. Everywhere north of this kind of line right here on Wikipedia is saying we need a vapor barrier on the inside. Very interesting. Now let's move over to a friend of mine's uh, website. This is Allison Bales, who runs a blog called Energy Vanguard. Fantastic blog, you should subscribe uh, to his feed for sure. But he wrote an article uh, a couple years ago called You Don't Need a Vapor Barrier, Probably, and this is a great article. I'm gonna summarize it briefly. He basically says that the act of diffusion, that water vapor going through the sheetrock and potentially condensing on the inside that act of diffusion is a pretty slow process and it's not gonna move a lot of water. In fact, through the whole heating season, this article says that you're gonna diffuse at most a third of a quart of water through a four by eight sheet of drywall. Now, on the other hand, most of the time when walls are getting wet, it's not diffusion, but it's actually air movement which is depositing that water. Look at this right here. Again, four by eight sheet, if we had a small hole in the drywall and our interior is being heated and we've got 40% relative humidity, air leaking into that cavity could bring with it as much as 30 quarts of water. Now that's a big deal. That's also a big deal for me in the hot humid south because air could be leaking from the outside in and doing the same thing, depositing on the back of the sheetrock where I've got a cold condensing surface. So basically, Allison says on this article, there's very few places, if any, in the U.S. that you really need a vapor barrier. The big deal that we need to think about is air barriers. Now let's go over to uh, my friend Martin Holliday, who writes uh, for Green Building Advisor, a great source of information on building science. And his article here, I'll link to this below, Do I Need a Vapor Retarder? 
read this great article, but the summary at the bottom here, if we go all the way to the bottom, the very last line is, what's the short version? Here's a couple real rules. Most buildings don't need polyethylene anywhere except underneath a concrete slab or on your crawl space floor. This goes really for the whole U.S. And the main reason you might use an interior vapor barrier or vapor retarder rather is to keep your building inspector happy. Now instead of using polyethylene, Martin says what we should consider using is a vapor retarding paint. That means a paint on the outside of the gypsum uh, sheetrock which is going to slow that diffusion down or a smart retarder. For instance, here's a couple brand names right here quoted. But the point of this article is that there's multiple different building zones in America and we really need to be cautious about putting that polyethylene up. Now here's a direct example from, uh, from me down here in Texas. I did a remodel on this house that was less than 10 years old and this has happened to me on multiple occasions where we found on a very young house polyethylene sheathing on the inside and it's a little hard to tell in this photo maybe but there's a little bit of uh, some moisture it looks like depositing on the back side of that and then look what we found on the inside of that sheetrock in several locations not good not good at all if you're in climate zone one two or three you don't want any kind of vapor retarder on the inside of the house whatsoever on the outside of the house you might have a low perm house wrap uh, or something that's going to stop both water and vapor on the outside, but on the inside of the walls you want nothing. Now there, this is the climate zone from climate zones from the DOE. So this is basically a map of all the different zones in America. And if you're in climate zone four and above, it actually you might actually use some amount of retarding of that moisture from uh, getting into those walls but it's really only if you get into the very coldest zone in America, which is climate zone seven up there, where you might actually use a vapor retarder. Pretty much every other climate zone, you don't need one on the inside, and certainly you don't wanna be using a plastic sheet. Okay, last thing I wanna mention, going back to the web here, go to buildingscience.com and they have a bookstore, and there's different climate zones, as I mentioned, and there's different ways to build in those different zones. The same house that you're going to build in Minnesota is not going to work if you build that house down in Florida. And so you actually want to buy the climate zone guide for your specific area. This is your Bible from a building science perspective. And there, of course, there's a million different assemblies. Some people are using exterior insulation. Others are not. You really want to get this book for your climate zone and figure out what's right for you. But the long and short of this video is if you're in America, you don't need a plastic sheet on the inside of your walls. You don't need to worry about it. The chances of a perm failure or a diffusion failure are very, very low. Most of the time, if you have a problem, it's because of air leakage through that cavity or bulk water that got in from the outside. Guys, super geeky topic. Thanks for putting up with me doing a slightly different video from the office here. Comment below if you've got any comments on this. If you like this format too, I'd love to hear that. Otherwise, follow me on Twitter and Instagram or we'll see you next time on The Build Show.